Hi, André. Professor André Petit, it's a pleasure to have you today. Uh, we are recording with some it's of the... It's a pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> thank you. We it's are a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, thank you. We are uh, recording a collection of uh, short presentations and interviews with the past leaders of IFSAM, the International Federation of Scholarly Associations of Management, uh, in the context of the celebration that we had last month in December of the 30 years of IFSAM's history. So today, uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to have you to record this uh, uh, presentation of your memories of your involvement in IFSAM, uh, knowing that you were the fifth president of IFSAM, but of course, as it is traditional in uh, most scholarly associations, before one becomes president, one is president-elect and is involved in the organization several years before. So please tell us about your um, memories and, and involvement with IFSAM since the beginning. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Xavier. And uh, I'm uh, talking to you, everyone who is listening, from uh, Sherbrooke, Quebec, Canada. And uh, I wish to thank all leaders of if, all, uh, IFSAM's uh, leader leaders for giving me that uh, opportunity to come back to my years of involvement in uh, IFSAM. I'd, uh, I'd say it started in 1989. At that time, I was an active member of the uh, Administrative Sciences Association of Canada, which we call uh, ASAC. And uh, Professor Herman Schwind, was at the time uh, president of ASAC, and Professor Schwint was a member of the faculty at uh, St. Mary's University in uh, Nova Scotia. In, in 1990, he was invited by Professor uh, Alba, Horst Alba, who was the driving force of the foundation of ASAC, if some, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, the meeting uh, was held in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, mm -hmm. and Professor Schwinn represented the Canada at that meeting. Professor Schwinn came back from Germany with the uh, conviction that ASAC should become a full member of IFSAM. A, that proposal was uh, endorsed by all ASAC uh, leaders. And uh, in uh, 1991, a workshop involving many, if some leaders, was held in Niagara Falls, Canada. The most important decision taken by founding members was to organize world conferences to be held uh, on even years. And uh, also, uh, regional conference on odd years were um, Planned. Such uh, regional conferences were held in the Brussels, Cardiff, Shanghai, Beijing, Helsinki, and a few other places. In May, in the month of May 1992, I became president of ASAC at the end of the annual conference, at the end of the annual Canadian conference held in Quebec City, my hometown. And in August of the same year, IFSAM presented its first world conference in Tokyo under the chairmanship of uh, Professor Noguchi, then president of the Japan Academy of Business Administration, or JABA. I was designated to represent Canada at this uh, Tokyo conference. And uh, at, uh, I should say that for my wife and I, this was our first uh, trip to Japan, and I remember how impressed we were by the blending of technological advances and uh, cultural traditions displayed in many locations by Japanese organizations. By all accounts, that conference was a remarkable one. In uh, two years later, in 1994, the second 
IFSAM International Conference was held in uh, Dallas, Texas, and I had been chosen to organize the Canadian delegation. Mm -hmm. The organizers chose to hold the IFSAM conference alongside the Academy of Management annual conference. I think it was a mistake because uh, the comparison between the two uh, conferences was not at that time in favor of IFSAM. For Professor Janice Bayer, the IFSAM uh, president, was the chief organizer of that conference. She was, um, as I remember, she was greatly impressed by the quality of the papers presented by Canadian scholars. So when my candidacy was presented to join the IFSAM executive, uh, she offered a strong support and I was elected IFSAM uh, treasurer for the following two years. So two years later, in 1996, Professor Alain Burlo, who became one of my good friends from the CNAM Paris, masterfully organized the third IFSAM World Conference. And I remember that he surrounded himself with uh, numerous colleagues who for most of them were also his friends. Together, they actively participated in making that conference a memorable one. Alain and his wife Geneviève invited to, die to their private home all members of the executive accompanied by their spouses. Also a cruise on the river scene with music and dance was part of the program. Given my French Canadian or Quebecois background, I was in familiar territory and made many new good friends, including of course, Alain and his wife, as well as Claude Simon and his wife. Uh, during the executive meeting, I was elected uh, president-elect and uh, with the responsibility of organizing the 2000 World Conference to be held in Montreal. Two years later, so in 1998, the fourth IFSAM uh, conference was organized by Professor Santiago Garcia Echevarria, and it was held in Alcala de Henares, near the capital city of Madrid. The city Alcala is known, among other things, for being the birthplace of Miguel de Cervantes, uh, widely regarded as the greatest um, writer in the Spanish language and one of the world's best novelists. Meetings were held in the, in the University of Alcala de Henares. That university is a very old one. It was founded in 1293 and it was refounded along modern lines in 1977. The University of Alcala is renowned around the world, among other things, for its annual presentation of the highly prestigious Cervantes Prize. One story I'd like to tell you about, uh, about that meeting in Alcala is that uh, during the council uh, meeting, there was a football game shown on TV in a separate room. And uh, many members of the council, uh, including myself, uh, we were very interested to watch that game because <laughs> that game was the FIFA World Cup final between the defending champions, the uh, Brazil, and the host uh, nation, France. France won the game. 3-0 with uh, Zinedine Zidane being the most valuable player after scoring the two first goals and Emmanuel Petit score, scoring the third goal in the last minute of play. Mm -hmm. As a joke, I was telling all people around that uh, that player was my cousin, which is <laughs> of course a joke. For the 2000 conference now in Montreal, um, I was lucky that the same year in 2000, ASAC, the Canadian Association, was planning to have its meeting in Montreal. So I made a proposal to ASAC leaders that instead of having two separate conferences, uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, competing for for participants. Uh, we should hold a international joint conference. That proposal was accepted, mm -hmm. and uh, I received substantial help from uh, Professor Jean Pasquero from uh, University of Quebec in Montreal, who was then president of ASAC, and uh, Professor Jean Ducharme, uh, then dean of Yukuam School of Management. That school was the location for the conference because at that time, the Montreal International Conference Center uh, was under repair, under major repair. Mm -hmm. One special characteristic of the uh, Montreal Conference is that I gave permission uh, uh, upon request to hold separate sessions, not only in English, which was mm -hmm. more for most sessions, but also in French, mm -hmm. in uh, Chinese, and in Spanish. Mm. That, uh, so people were very satisfied with that, very glad to be, uh, to have the opportunity of using their own language, especially, uh, I remember Chinese people coming to me and giving me uh, much uh, thanks for that decision. It's also uh, Spanish speaking people. So that in terms of results, that international conference attracted more than 1000 participants, while the usual ASAC conference was uh, in terms of participants 500 so it, it doubled doubled its size mm -hmm. uh, participants came from uh, 32 countries and uh, 200 universities comments received were all were all very positive therefore it seems fair to conclude that the montreal conference was a great success uh two years later finally uh, in, uh, in 2002, the conference was held in Australia on the Gold Coast, and it was organized by Professor Greg Bamber. I was delighted to, of course, to attend this conference as uh, with the title of past president of IFSAM, and that was my last year as a member of the executive. So in all, I was involved in uh, IFSAM, Council and Executive, for about 10 years, 1992 to 2002. And uh, this implication gave me the opportunity to have a much larger view of management. My, uh, I'd love to say that my specialty, I come from a, an industrial and labor relations background, and my specialty is human resource management got my PhD degree from uh, Cornell. So before my involvement in IFSAM, my focus was more on North America and especially on the Quebec situation, which is a special situation within North America, as you, as you well know. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I became more interested at looking to, at, at issues from an international international lenses and uh, for example i created a new course in international hrm human resource management in which my students and i would travel to europe for a two-week period but before that we spend many weeks and months organizing that um, journey and because we were meetings, we had meetings with executive levels managers to discuss HR issues, but faced by multinational organization. I also transformed one, uh, another one of my courses at the MBA level to get my students interested in cultural diversity by establishing direct communications uh, with other groups of international students, also uh, in the USA and in various con other countries in the world, to discuss issues. And, but I was giving my students the, um, the, the focus, the, 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 
the mood order <laughs> in French to discuss issues and pay attention to the influence of culture on mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. All that was made possible by contacts I had developed during my years of involvement in IFSAM. Today, and I will end this way, I, will, I strongly believe that the world of work, given our technological advances in information systems and in uh, transportation, the world of work is inevitably uh, international. I believe, I strongly believe in the uh, famous sentence that uh, if you don't go international, international will come to you. So you have no choice. Our students have no choice either, and they must be prepared to deal with this reality with an open mind and uh, respect for others. And uh, I believe success successful managers of tomorrow um, are those who will recognize the value of various cultures and diverse languages. Mm -hmm not only English, all over the place, many other languages have, uh, should be considered. These students and future managers must also have developed the skills to uh, not only calculate the return on investment, which is important, of course, but there are other uh, dimensions of uh, world situation, business situation, and um, they must be ready to solve challenges with multiple dimensions including economic, cultural, psychological, political, technical, social, and so on. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I thank you for listening and uh, have a good day. Thank you so much, Professor Petit. Merci beaucoup, André. Uh, it's been very interesting. And with this, your uh, initial presentation ends. And now we'll take a short pause and we'll start the second part with a kind of more of an interview. Thank you again. Thank you. So now in this second part of this uh, recorded uh, session, let's say, uh, I would like to ask you a few questions to enrich your presentation to get more detail, maybe more, more juicy anecdotes and also reflections about those 10 years in which you were involved in IFSAM, which is actually the early history of IFSAM. It's almost its first 10 years or so. So I guess my, my first question is really about the origins. You talked about Professor Schwind, who was the president of ASAC and who did participate in the foundational meeting in Frankfurt in 1990, um, where Horst Alba had which Horst Alba had convened um, with some of his colleagues, and I wanted to know um, whether you act you met Professor Alba. Oh yes, yes, I met uh, Professor Alba many times, many at many meetings, and also in. Um, in Spain, in, um, in Madrid and at the University of Alcala. We both were invited to make presentations uh, in front of um, MBA students. And, um, but coming back to um, Professor Schwinn, Professor Schwinn had an advantage uh, because he, is a, he, is, he became a Canadian, but his, his background, his name tells it that he is from German origin. So he, right. was, uh, he was a good friend with uh, Professor Halba. And uh, when Professor Halba called on ASAC to um, join IFSAM, of course, Professor Schwinn was uh, already convinced, very easily convinced. And, um, he, he was a good um, advocate for the uh, decision to be taken by ASAC uh, members to join um, IFSAM. It's a, it's a pity that I, I heard over the years that um, the Canadian leaders of the Canadian Association of uh, Management Scholars uh, decided uh, to not to withdraw from IFSAM for some uh, uh, 
some years. And, and um, I, I think now they, have, they are deciding to come back to Ifsam. They are from back. From what I heard. And they, they are already back. So uh, they are they, back now. Yes, they rejoined uh, last year in 2020. And we're very happy. Uh, the president of the current president of ASAC. Patricia Genoe McLaren is very supportive, and uh, and we are really uh, benefiting from their uh, commitment and uh, uh, involvement. As a matter of fact, we will be chairing together, co-chairing the first webinar of IFSAM on January 29th on management research evaluation on the measurement of management research quality that has been in a way triggered by the FT, the Financial Times survey on journals that which was recently released. So we are very, very happy to have ASAC back. Yeah, that's a very good initiative. The, and I, I heard about that uh, by, uh, I received an email about that and I will certainly be listening a participant to that uh, meeting. Great, excellent. Okay. Now, so, now so I will you, your next question. Yes, well, actually, you know, uh, unfortunately, we were not able to have Professor Albach uh, participate in the 30 years um, anniversary ceremony on December 8th. Uh, he is already of a very advanced age. Uh, and so I would like to ask you, what could you tell us about Professor Albach's um, let's say, personality and also the way he conducted, I guess, those initial meetings or, um, you know, I know that he soon was succeeded uh, by uh, Professor Noguchi, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, maybe you had the chance, as you said, you, you interacted with him for several years, including up to the conference in Spain in 1998. So maybe if you could tell us about his personality, his ideas about IFSAM, his leadership style. Is uh, I'd say that his leadership style was a, a the the style of the man behind the scene. He, he I, I would uh, suggest that um, he was the type of guy who likes to be a a kingmaker. Uh, to, to leave the uh, position of responsibility to other people, but being in the back to give them advice and, mm -hmm. and uh, to make sure that uh, the project uh, succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, 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 I didn't know him much, much more than that. The, I, I didn't know him on, on a personal basis. Uh -huh. And, and uh, I just heard about him that he was in Germany. He was a what they call in Germany uh, a um, major professor, so, and he was uh, having a, a great deal of influence. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that's about it for for Professor Alba. Okay. And, uh, other, he, he, made, he made sure that other people in Germany would follow his uh, footsteps. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, Professor Weber, mm -hmm. who, who unfortunately died, I don't remember how many years ago, but uh, and, uh, for other leaders from Germany, I don't remember mm -hmm. that much. I, I went to Germany a co couple of times, but uh, that's about it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So um, actually, it, we, we'll talk about Professor Weber later on uh, a bit more, uh, if you don't mind. So sure. chronologically, um, Professor Noguchi succeeded uh, Professor Albach as the second president of IFSAM. And uh, you already mentioned in your presentation about how impressed you were with the technological advances uh, or in 1992 that you could observe in Japan. I would like to ask you uh, about, um, you know, Professor Noguchi, Tasuku Noguchi, uh, you know, about him, your interactions with him, 
and his role as if some president and also if you had interacted with other leaders of java of the japanese academy for business administration the japan system of uh, training future managers uh, I, I i didn't know about that because i'm, I'm trained in in north america and mm -hmm. focused in north america so i i, I should have known but um I didn't know that uh, the the links between corporations and universities mm -hmm. were so close mm -hmm. in in Japan. Um, it, it, it is close in the United States, and uh, I remember when I came back from my three years of doctoral studies in in uh, Ithaca, New York, mm -hmm. at the Cornell University. Um, I came back with the intention of helping helping uh, corporations in Quebec to be closer to the uh, university professors so that we should not be in uh, ivory towers mm -hmm. and we should uh, work together to make advances for our society mm -hmm. and uh, but in Japan uh, I noticed that that seemed to be the case mm -hmm. and a professor like Professor Naguchi, Noguchi, mm -hmm. he seemed to be a influential, in not only in on in the world of academy, academia, but also in the world of businesses, as a little bit like in uh, Germany. In Germany, right. it's also very close the the links between uh, university professors and uh, business leaders. So in in Quebec, we are trying to. We're not there. We are, we are trying to make it happen a little bit more. From what uh, I learned from our Japanese colleagues recently in preparing the ceremony for the 30 years of Ibsam, I did actually uh, interact quite a bit of uh, colleagues from Java, from the Japanese association. And they actually told me that the Japanese system after Second World War actually draw a lot on the German model for yeah. uh, management education and the, that interaction between university and corporations. Also pe people in, in uh, Japan, university professors, they are very um, sensitive to um, personal attentions. And if you are nice with them, they will be nice with you may, even many years later. I remember when I was uh, at the doctoral level in, at Cornell, there was a, a Japanese student who was taking a class I had taken a year before. And I had a pile of documents and uh, it, it was a, a course which had a reputation of being tough, being difficult. And um, it was on the sociology of organizations, and the, the professor was having having had uh, many um, assistants, and he was behaving like a, a big boss. Who was the professor? And, um, my Japanese uh, colleagues, student. Uh huh. Uh, he, he was coming from a a, a large business. He was coming from Japan Steel. And I remember I, I took all the material I had. I didn't need that. Uh -huh. So I took all the material I had from the course and I transferred that material to him. I said, you do whatever you want with this material. I don't need it anymore. Right. And if it can help you, so much the better. And he was so thankful, so grateful for that, that uh, he said, anytime you want to come to Japan, give me a call will give you wonderful reception <laughs> and anytime in the future. But um, the bad thing, the bad news is that I lost, <laughs> I lost, I lost the papers on which I wrote his name and it's, um, <laughs> it's the coordinates, so I, I couldn't do it. But for another professor at the, at the conference in Montreal, there was a professor who was a president of the Japan Association of uh, human resource professors, human resource management, teaching of human resource management. So I asked one of my uh, doctoral students 
to take care of him in Montreal and to show him around and uh, mm -hmm. to be his uh, uh, Sherpa. In, uh, in, and he, that uh, professor, he invited me two years later to go to Japan for a conference, international conference in human resource management. And I was a distinguished speaker. And he designated one of his students to show me around, <laughs> to, uh, to be a, a guide around. It was not in Tokyo, it was in uh, Osaka. Mm -hmm. And uh, but to, uh, we spent a day and a half uh, uh, traveling around Osaka, see the wonderful uh, temples, uh, the wonderful places. And it, as you know, it's always better to visit a foreign location with having a guide sure. from uh, the, the, the location. So there and was the, reciprocity. What did? There was reciprocity. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. So at that time in, in 92, um, you were still not in the executive, um, but so you might not have interacted uh, much more with Professor Noguchi. I gather um, that what you said is basically, um, you know, his links with corporations, uh, basically what, what you would have to add about him. Because, you know, in my questions, I'm also trying to get uh, a, a better sense for the personality in relationship to the management of the Federation. Of, of the different president's leadership style. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, uh, as we move on to the third president, which was Jan Bayer from the Academy of Management, um, who, with whom I think you interacted a bit more. Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> so so that, that conference in 94 took place in Dallas, in Texas, uh, I guess in October also? Uh, no, it no. was uh, me, me, the, uh, the same, the same period of time that the uh, Academy of Management has its annual convention. So it so was the, in... uh, the United States, in the United States, the, um, American, uh, the scholars uh, at the end of the school year, it ends in April and they have a conference in May and, and it starts for, uh, Right. The, the, the time, the usual time for the annual conference of the Academy of Management, as I remember, it's uh, the end of May, beginning of June, because they get uh, cheaper rates from hotels and uh, places like that. So that because it's low season. It's interesting. It's not, it's not yet the high season. It's interesting because I started going to the Academy of Management meetings in 97. So okay. only three years later, and it was already in August. Uh, and so wow. now it's, it's always in early August. So, um, so, you're okay. saying, so you're saying that this conference of IFSAM in 94 took place in the same place in parallel with the Academy of Management conference? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And so there were some sessions which were if some label and others which were academy label. How, how did yeah, that work? It was the same place, but uh, it was separate. It was separate. separate. And, and uh, Janice Bayer uh, called upon many of his uh, colleagues, many people she knows, she knew. And, and those uh, US uh, scholars were acting like uh, distinguished speakers. I see. And they were giving uh, workshops and uh, it was like, uh, it was a bit like um, doing a favor to scholars around the world to distribute uh, that uh, it was not equal. Right. If you understand what I mean. Sure, sure. So. Um, but it was interesting. But. Uh, sure. Many of my, uh, many participants uh, had the feeling that uh, it could have been uh, more respectful. 
So according to the records, um, the, there were 177 papers in the IPSAM conference in 94, with, uh, uh, together with eight symposia. And there were proceedings of those papers of 255 pages. So I can imagine indeed that despite 177 papers, it's not, not bad, but the Academy of Management already in 94 probably attracted 5,000 people. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. It was very, very small compared to the giant. Right. So what is, what is your recollection of Jan Bayer, who unfortunately also passed away several years ago? What did you say? What is your recollection of Jan Bayer? She was a woman of character. She was quick at uh, telling uh, various people what she thought. She, she was very affirmative and, and uh, strong lady, strong lady. And, and also her, her good friend, Caroline Dexter, was a little bit uh, moderating her, um, her character. And um, she, she would not tolerate that much that many people were unable to speak English. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, especially with the Chinese, with the, Ch the Japanese, and she, she, would, she, she wanted the decisions to be taken quickly and fast, but she could not understand that uh, people were not going at that pace. Mm -hmm. They would slower to understand or slower to admit and, uh, and so on. So that, that's uh, what I remember. So that's one of the reasons why uh, she, she had a positive bias in my favor because I had a, of mm. course, it was easy for me to behave, although my English is not as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, because I had a background of three years in the, at Cornell, uh, and she knew it. She she knew people at Cornell, and she she had a, a positive bias in my favor. And, yeah, and, uh, I mean, she, she she had a PhD in sociology, right? So I guess that you had some common interests. Backgrounds. Yes. So you had uh, correct me if I'm mistaken. So. Um, you then were nominated as treasurer of IFSAM and hence became part of the executive committee. But the, were you before already in the council as ASAC representative? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I joined the council in 92. In 92. As, as a quick Canadian representative. Right, right. It so, was kind, kind of an, an automatic uh, ex officio because I was president of ASAC, I, was, I became representative, ASAC representative within the council, if some council. Right, right. And who was the other representative? Usually each full member at IFSAM has two representatives in the council. Yeah. So as you were saying, the, um, of course, in, in the 1994 IFSAM Congress, given that it was in parallel uh, with, uh, on the same site with the Academy of Management meetings, uh, both organized by Janice Bayer, there was a clear uh, asymmetry in terms of the size of the two congresses or conferences. But it seems that uh, Janice Bayer was actually quite convinced about the importance of IFSAM. And, and, and they actually- oh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's a fact, and uh, but she was convinced that uh, there was a necessity for uh, uh, for um, scholarly association which were more advanced to help other uh, other uh, association of scholars, and, and that there was for the American uh, scholars to they were, there was a mission to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And there was a, 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 learning, a learning curve to go through in terms of how to do this, to do that uh, the, in the most appropriate way. Mm -hmm. And other than this 
94 Congress, obviously important because I guess that uh, the attendees to the um, if some Congress, maybe they could also attend some of the sessions of the Academy Conference. So well, no, the, no? Uh, from what I remember, the, there was a a wall. There was a wall between the two. Okay. Uh, because uh, I don't remember exactly the, but my memory of it is that there was a wall between the two. So that's why in Montreal. I managed to make sure that they will not be a wall. Okay. And it was it would be really a joint conference, exactly. and that okay. uh, participation in the international in the meetings organized by IFSAM would be open to ASAC members as well as uh, ASAC um, sessions would be open to IFSAM members. Right. Right. So before we get to that, um, to the to the conference in in Canada, uh, let's uh, just to kind of conclude this '94 chapter. Um, you mentioned uh, Janice Bayer's good friend Carolyn Dexter, and uh, to, um, who who actually gives the name to the international award um, at the Academy annual conference. Um, so if, if my readings of the records are correct, Carolyn Dexter actually was nominated as president-elect of IFSAM. Is that right? I don't, uh, I cannot confirm that because I don't remember. But she was in the council? What, uh, what I remember is that uh, Carolyn Dexter was a very nice lady, good humor, uh, friendly, uh, open, uh, and uh, she, she and um, Janice were quite a couple, sure. <laughs> quite a couple, always sure. together. <laughs> sure. Um, so maybe now we can move to the 96 conference. Um, then uh, you have already um, your term of as treasurer was for 95 and 96? Treasurer was two, two years. I became vice president, program chair, president elect, uh, right. however you want to call that. And um, although I was not having the title of treasurer, um, almost everybody on the, on the council came to me and said uh, you need to keep uh, control of the treasurer of the treasury uh -huh. so um during my the preparation between i managed in such a way that the person who was having the title of treasurer would not lose face but uh, he, the, that person was coming from a country where i'd say um Corruption was too high. I think so. And all, 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 almost everybody on the council wanted me to give him the credit for the how to keep the money safe and how to evolve with the in terms of financial in financial terms, but uh, do not send the money over there because it That's will disappear. Right, that's very interesting and actually is a, um, I would say for an international, a truly international worldwide organization, which has members from different parts and cultures of the world, this is, I think, a challenge, a managerial governance challenge in which we might still find ourselves that sometimes someone gets a position right an executive position because it's 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 good to have let's say balance in the executive across different members from different parts of the world but these persons for a reason or another for one reason or the other they might not be able to actually carry out the function and someone else needs to do it but uh, that other person gets the, you know, public credit, let's say, um, 
it's it's a challenge, and I'm I didn't know that, and I, I guess that I I appreciate you doing it because uh, if some is in good financial shape, <laughs> uh, and uh, till now, and I think that it, at least we owe it to some extent to what you did. That's the time at which um, Alain Burlo mm -hmm. was president-elect and and president, uh, organizing. Uh, the conference. Uh, is it uh, the case that the pre when when was the case that the president-elect uh, function was tied to being the organizer of the Congress of the following Congress? Was that something that was already decided, or it was more informally uh, emerging? No, it was, my my memory of that is that it was a a proposal. It was like um, the uh, Olympics <laughs> site. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's uh, maybe it's too much, but in Lausanne, you know about the choice of Olymp Olympic Games. Uh, so we would uh, present uh, anybody who was interested into receiving IFSA members uh, would present a, a proposal to the to the council, and there would be a vote and. and uh, in the Montreal case, uh, I, I put together s some information and I, I, I described my plan for organizing a successful conference in Montreal and that proposal was accepted. And, and then I, I was having uh, four years in advance to, be, to put the foundations for a successful conference make connect with all the uh, actors and uh, one thing I, 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 sh I should tell you is that um, mm -hmm. in Canada at that time the years before and after 2000 um, uh, the federal government in Canada was uh, fighting especially with the financial uh, powers to make sure that Quebec would not go, would not vote in favor of Quebecers or Quebecois, would not vote in favor of independence. Mm -hmm. So the federal government was spending a lot of money to make sure that the um, emotions, the, uh, uh, the federalist uh, orientation of mm -hmm. uh, Quebec people would be great enough to they would decide to stay uh, within the Canadian Federation. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of money available, especially at the federal level, mm -hmm. to encourage any uh, activities which could be presented that the advantages of uh, working with the federal government and working with the other people in, in the rest of Canada. So the Canadian Association uh, was in a position to get some money and because we were organizing an international conference, it was easier for us to get money from various uh, uh, divisions or various uh, departments mm -hmm. in the federal government as well as the Quebec government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why at the end of the IFSAM conference in Montreal, we, had, we made a surplus financial surplus quite substantial okay and uh, we gave back uh, the surplus money to if sam so it helped on the financial side great Continue. so we were talking about alain burlo and uh, his role as president-elect uh, organizing the 1996 conference which if i understand it correctly was still organized in a way directly by IFSAM separately. And this was uh, done in Paris. Um, according to the records, he told us that there were uh, 350 participants from 29 countries with 230 papers. So going up from 114 in Tokyo to 177 in Dallas. Uh, and as I said, uh, 230 in Paris. And papers could also be whether in English or in French. You already told us um, 
that uh, you became, let's say, friends with, with Allah. Um, but uh, I would also like to invite you to say a few words about your interaction in the IFSAM Council and in the IFSAM Executive, given that you overlapped as him president and you president-elect, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Alors, uh, yes. Um, I didn't know Alain Burlo before I attended the first conference in uh, Tokyo. So um, I met Alain uh, in, uh, and he was uh, delivering a speech as the as distinguished um, speaker in uh, Tokyo. And because of, we are both French speaking and uh, uh, we, so we, we spoke after his presentation and uh, very quickly we, we develop, uh, well, it's very easy to develop uh, positive uh, links with uh, Alain Burlo. He's a, a very good fellow and nice, uh, he's always smiling and uh, mm -hmm. good, good, good guy. And so it's easy. And um, when I became treasurer, his specialty is accounting. Mm -hmm. And as well as uh, Claude Simon is the, Claude Simon, the, the were professor at the same school for many years together. So they are very close friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and uh, also I must say Alain is very um, hospitable. Uh, I don't know if it's the right word in English, but yeah. uh, hospitable. That means he, he sends, invite, he invites very easily uh, people to come to his, uh, his uh, home mm -hmm. in, in Geneviève. So we, we gave, became friends with Alain and Geneviève and many others. And uh, I was considered as being part of the, uh, of the group. For example, in uh, in uh, 1997, the first time I was with my wife going to um, uh, China, to the um, uh, Shanghai conference, the first in 97, uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I heard the French people, the French scholars participating to the Shanghai conference. They organized a, a, a after the Shanghai conference, they organized a, a 10 days or 12 days going around Chinese, China as, as a country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, they told us, my wife and I, and we joined the group. So we were the only not uh, parish people. <laughs> and they, we, a group, as, as a group, we were maybe 16 people. But only my wife and I were from Quebec. The, all the others were from France and especially from Paris. Right. And we went around for, during. Uh, 14, 14, 12 or 14 days in various locations in, uh, in China. So it was a, a wonderful memory. And um, anytime I, Alain knew I would be going to France or be going to any other places, he would uh, send me an email and invite me to go home to, to his home and uh, to, at least to meet, uh, to meet, uh, for for dinner or for or for lunch, mm -hmm. um, so uh, and of course I did the same. Uh, I invited him and many other people from France to to come to my home and uh, share the uh, the place and have fun together. <laughs> I remember uh, it comes to my mind that uh, I invited Alain and his wife uh, to come to Quebec during the winter season. <laughs> and so we went, we rented the uh, motorcycle to go on, on ice, uh, and ski, skidoo, we call that skidoo. And it goes on snow, but it's like a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Alain drives a motorcycle on a regular basis, so he, he was driving the other one, I was driving the other one, that, the, one of them, and we had a guide with us for a mm -hmm. third motorcycle right. going in the woods but uh alain um, made a, a a turn too fast <laughs> and his, his wife went out of the out of motorcycle oh, and, uh, and she she ended up on on the tree but wow. uh, she, she 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 uh had no arm no uh, no problem lucky 
especially what they spoke about that trip in the <laughs> Quebec winter for months, if not for years. I can years. imagine. I it was a fantastic uh, experience. Uh, so that uh, I can uh, attest to the friendship uh, and the hospitality of Alain because um, after meeting, thanks to the 30 year anniversary and the video that we did, uh, he has also invited me to visit him in Paris and I'm looking forward once the uh, restrictions because of the pandemics uh, are over to, yeah. to really have the chance to spend some more time with him. Um, you mentioned that regional conference uh, and actually that, that if some had regional conferences during the odd years uh, and, and that I think as I have heard was because there were too many candidates for the even years for the conferences, the congresses, and so people wanted to organize other conferences. I wanted to ask you about more about that Shanghai conference, which, if I rem if I'm not mistaken, uh, our friends from Cinema, uh, which is the Chinese National Economic Association Management, Management Association. Association. Uh, organized, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my memory of that is not exactly in the same terms. Uh, the Chinese scholars were very aggressive. They wanted to organize the World Conference. They were coming, coming with proposals, they were concurrent proposals, but they were not lucky at that each time because um, other people would say, um, it's not yet, not yet, you're not, not ready yet to, uh, to be, and there were other, other types of, um, uh, of reservations. Right. That's why, that's one of the reasons. But uh, we also went to Cardiff. Cardiff, it's not because of, um, because we wanted the British Academy of Management to join IFSAM and be a, an active member in IFSAM. And, they they offered to the problem is not that there were more candidates for world conferences the problem is that we wanted to have an annual uh, meetings for the executives and for um, uh, council members mm -hmm. and um, because at the time there was no zoom and uh, Sure, of course. Mechanism by which we could uh, exchange uh, at a distance uh, virtually. So we we needed at the time to have uh, pers pers person to person meetings. Mm -hmm. So that and that was good to have a meeting sure. in uh, Cardiff, a meeting in Helsinki, a, a, and uh, many of course in two twice in uh, in China, Shanghai first and Beijing second. So you were talking, we're talking about the, the one in, in Shanghai in 97, um, as I said, organized by the cinema friends. Um, was that already uh, Professor Yang Zhang involved? Were you, did you meet Professor Dong Shui Su? The Yang founder? Zhang, no. Dong Shui, Dong Shui. Dong Shui. Dong Shui. That, that was a special, uh, a special man. He, he was more like a business boss. Then I remember in 97, uh, in Shanghai, uh, Alain Burlo was mm -hmm. president and I was president-elect. Right. And we both were invited by uh, Dong Shui to a dinner. Mm -hmm. But it was a dinner uh, as if we were meeting, um, I don't know, uh, Donald Trump or <laughs> a, 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 pers a personality of power. He, he, he was, uh, <laughs> one funny thing happened at the Vietnamese, we're not used to that in the, with our French culture. And all, all the, the, the plates were in the, meeting, in the middle and it was turning table. And he was decided what we should have. <laughs> He was putting putting the meals in in our plates, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, anyway, it was a a shock. It, but we we could see that uh, he was having the control of uh, many other people around. Mm 
maybe it was, there were 20 people around and uh, but uh, he was the boss and he spoke to you he spoke oh sure sure but but he he, he was having a lot of difficulty uh, with english it was in english uh but a few people around would, would translate i see you know that one his son chang wei saw is one of the council representatives of cinema currently yeah, yeah. I can understand that because uh, it's like a, a monarch. He was like a monarch. Yeah, he is the, he's one of the three vice presidents and the general secretary of cinema. You also mentioned the Beijing conference where I guess you met Professor Ji Chen Chen. Chen, Chen, Chen. Professor Chen, um, it's another type of, uh, he's more on the political side. He's more a strong, strong man in the party. And is uh, more of the quiet man. He, he doesn't speak loud, he speaks soft. And you, you see that, but you can see that he is a, a man, also a man of power, but in a different manner, with a different style, s softer. And, and uh, I remember he spoke to me about um, his uh, some of his um, children. That he has he has uh, children uh, in various places in the world, um, going to famous universities and uh, in, with the intention of coming back to China with uh, knowledge and competencies to uh, mm -hmm. to contribute to the evolution of the society. And um, but uh, Professor Chen was trying uh, to uh, understand how it was going in, in, uh, elsewhere in, Can in Canadian uh, Federation of in Canadian Association of Management Scholars and uh, anywhere in France, in, in France, and, but um, not but, <laughs> and, um, and he was having a good role. He was having a good, uh, he was obviously he he was aware of the gap the uh, the lack that uh, the lag uh, that um, uh, Chinese universities needed to to mm -hmm. fill and he was working on that very strongly but he was right. not so closely related to businesses business leaders as the guys from from uh, Shanghai, and right. uh, and we could feel that in China, uh, we could feel there was the Shanghai orientation and the Beijing orientation. Beijing orientation was more close to the Communist Party and close to political uh, leaders, while Shanghai orientation is more business oriented close to business leaders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Um, so again, if my records are correct, the organization that Professor Chen represented uh, and still does represent at IFSAM is the Chinese Academy of Management Science, CAMS, which joined IFSAM in 1999. So it's like 21, 22 years ago, I had the privilege of meeting Professor Chen at the council meeting in Shanghai in 2018. So almost 20 years after you met him, uh, in 20 years, the Chinese situation uh, overall, as well as the university situation has changed quite a bit, uh, but, it seems that it, that that characterization that you provided uh, between the two focuses, the two nodes, Beijing and Shanghai, uh, government uh, or politics and and the business, is still uh, quite salient. And I was wondering, you know, um, it was Professor Chen already the leader of camps 
Because one of the things that is always difficult with the Chinese world, also because of the language, because you know I, I don't speak uh, Mandarin, Chinese, uh, Chinese mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's, it's hard to find uh, people who directly speak um, fluently English. It's, it's sometimes hard to have direct relationship with these people. So it's always kind of through intermediaries. Um, so I was wondering, you know, um, did you interact with other leaders of camps? Um, not really, not, not really. really. I, was, I was having the, the language problem. Right. Uh, also, I, I know I was, uh, I was respected because I was holding the title of president and many people would come to me with uh, requests or with uh, just to, to say hello and to uh, present their respect. Uh, you know, I'm now a president-elect and, and in a few months I'll become president. Uh, and I have been in the council since 2018. But I must say that it's, it's a uh, fantastic but also challenging cross-cultural management experience um to communicate and to arrive at decisions with so many different traditions and also fluency in english which makes things difficult in particular now that we are so much into electronic communication and emails and and the written word and so you know when you're in a meeting you have more time things can be clarified but in emails, it's always more complicated, I find. And it's been really very interesting, the interaction with the different uh, cultural traditions, including the Japanese and, and, the, uh, and the Chinese. So I don't know if like you, I will, you know, I do teach some, some cross-cultural management when I teach about acquisitions and alliances, uh, but maybe, maybe after this experience, I will, uh, uh, even teach more about this because I'm, I'm having really first-hand experience in this. I wanted to move to the um, to the Alcalá de Henares. As you know, I'm, I'm originally from Spain, although I'm Catalan. Uh, mm -hmm. My mother tongue is Catalan, not Castilian. I was wondering, I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and um, I had had the pleasure also to interact with uh, Professor Santiago Garcia Echevarria, again recently because of the um, 30 year anniversary. And it happens that Professor um, Garcia Echevarria um, is a very good friend of one of my former professors at ESADE in Barcelona, Professor Eugenio Recio. And they were both students of Ernst Albach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm finding some kind of lineage here. <laughs> I knew about that lineage i yeah. know about that lineage and and also i i believe uh, professor echevarria got uh, obtained his doctoral degree from germany mm -hmm. exactly yeah but over the years uh, links between germany and spain they they became close um while the kings uh, all the the links between the the monarchies and the, the um, which was the the the, 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 the dynasty the Habsburg, mm -hmm. Habsburg from Vienna. Mm -hmm. During that time, the uh, Spain was a part of that uh, that kingdom. That's right, the Emperor Charles V. Yes. So, um, could, what could you tell us from your interaction with uh, Santiago? Uh, Santiago being the a president after um, Alain. So uh, Alain was past president, still in the executive committee. Santiago was president, and and you were, yeah. Before the before the before the two thousand conference in Montreal. That's right. Uh, yeah. So I had good uh, relationships with uh, Santiago, but. Uh, of course, the, the cultural, I was not used to the, uh, it was not as warm as between me and be, with Alain, because the, there was a, the barrier, language barrier and cultural, cultural sure. barrier, but I was impressed. I was impressed by 
the part, the cultural part, the cultural dimension, Santiago was able to bring into the conference in Alcala de Henares. Mm -hmm. The location, only the location, uh, Alcala de Henares is a fantastic place mm -hmm. for somebody who, who love to um, study or learn about culture and history and uh, um, Miguel de Cervantes, uh, <laughs> like many others, had uh, read uh, a few of his uh, productions. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we, we all know uh, uh, about that. And uh, did we, on, on, there was a, a place mm -hmm. called uh, upon uh, Cervantes, Cervantes mm -hmm. Plaza, Playa mm -hmm. or Plaza. Plaza, yeah. Uh, in, in Alcala de Nares. And, um, mm -hmm. So I have a, a good memory of my stay over there. And, and uh, after that also, uh, a few years later, I was invited by Santiago to make uh, be a part of uh, one of his classes in MBA to make some presentation uh, two days, uh, mm -hmm. two days. Uh, and uh, because I was going to France anyway, so he invited me to take a plane and go, <laughs> go to Madrid and Alcala de Nares for a few days. Uh, and uh, it was a, a good opportunity to meet uh, Ars Alba was there. And uh, that, was, that was interesting. And we could see that uh, Santiago, Santiago is also a man of contacts, a man of uh, relationships, and uh, is a, 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 an organizer. And is, uh, but with a, a style completely different from the North America style. He's not, mm -hmm. he's not direct. He's, uh, he goes on this, he goes <laughs> both ways, uh, soft, uh, soft ways, soft, soft, uh, slowly. And, uh, but he, he, he reaches uh, his goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He must be an effective man. <laughs> right, right. Um, and he's still very active. So I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, one thing that I couldn't quite understand is usually as we discussed, the person who is going to organize the next uh, biannual Congress gets, ele gets elected as president-elect and has these two years to prepare the next conference. And then once that conference is over, then the following year that person becomes president for two years. But I, you were president-elect four years before already, or? Uh, vice president and uh, involved in the, um, no, sorry. I became president-elect after this, the Spain conference, but uh, since the proposal had been accepted in Paris, okay, I knew already that I would become, sure, I would become president-elect. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, because Santiago was a president-elect for two years, right? Be becoming president after before, that. Yeah. All right, so we get to the, um, uh, and, and that time it was, you know, I was, um, I, I actually left uh, Spain in 97 to go to continue my doctoral studies in the US. Uh, that's why I attended the first academy conference in 97. But the Spanish Association, the Spanish Academy of Management had been founded, I think in 93 or 94. But but this yeah. but this if some conference in Alcala was separate was not with the Spanish Association is that right? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, Santiago Professor Echevarria was having uh -huh. problems uh, connecting the two. I think. I think. So then we get to the um, 2000 conferences, which is your conference, your Congress. Mm -hmm. And I guess which is the first one to be explicitly, uh, as you said, jointly organized 
between IFSAM and one, it's it, one of its members, in this case, the Canadian Association, ASAC. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, um, again, there is some uh, serendipitous uh, overlap here because Jean Pasquero had been one of my professors in the PhD program in Esade. So I, I was able to benefit from a course on business government relationships, I remember, by Jean. Uh, and I have very, very good memories of that course. I, it must have been in 96 or 95. Um, and then I, I moved to, uh, as I said, to the US, to Minnesota. Uh, and finally enough, uh, URAM, which is a European Academy of Management, which is a member of IFSAM since 2018, is organizing its 21st conference um, in Quebec. Well, it's not gonna be in Quebec, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, right? But it, it's supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be with UCAM, UCAM in Quebec, in Montreal in June. Yes. So it will be online and obviously our Canadian friends, uh, the Dean uh, and, and his team uh, Comblan, Dean Comblan and his team are very much involved, obviously, even if it's not going to happen physically in, in Quebec. Uh, but uh, this is another connection, I guess we, we, we come back to, to UCAM. Um, so you already talked about this Congress and, um, you know, we know that it, it was very successful um, according uh, I don't have here the, the number of papers which were presented, maybe you remember, uh, but there is a CD-ROM, a CD-ROM which no, was published, right? Which was an innovation. Yeah, I the CD-ROM I still have, but the, it doesn't work anymore, any longer, because uh, it's uh, the, the technical, um, we, I, I was having technical difficulties making, your, making it work. Mm -hmm. The, so the city rom is no longer useful. Do you have the do you, do you have the proceedings in paper that could be scanned? In papers, no, I didn't keep it. Okay. But I, I probably uh, it, I probably uh, put it into the uh, university library. So I, if I want to find it, I could. I think it would be nice if they could scan it, so yes. we could we could have it. I mean, it's not urgent, but mm -hmm. you know. But I take a note of that. Yeah, it will be great. So I guess we, we're coming to the to the end of this ten years uh, of your involvement with IFSAM, and and we get to this um, conference, the the sixth IFSAM conference in um, in Australia, and Australia. Uh, and indeed, um, well, actually, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Greg Bamberg is the president elect. Uh, to organize this conference, and you are um, president, past president, and then past president. So, what can you tell us about Greg and and also his leadership style uh, as as president of IFSAM? Greg is a very good fellow. He's a a gentleman in the full meaning of the word, and is um, a, a man of the world. He, he, he's gone to uh, almost everywhere <laughs> around the around the herd, and is um, is is in the same domain as I am because he's in the industrial and labor relations. Yes, and he's more on the uh, collective bargaining mm -hmm. side. Right. But my your, my first background from uh, Laval University in Quebec City. It's a a bachelor and a master in industrial and labor relations. And mm -hmm. I, I was focused on, in the beginning, I was focused on collective bargaining as well as labor law, labor relations. And, uh, and my, my father, my, the reason why I chose that orientation is that my father was a union leader for 20 years, the, from the age of 32 until the age of 52. In Montreal. So in, in, in Quebec City. In Quebec City. In Quebec City. And then he, after that, he started a business. He became a business owner. <laughs> so he ran a, a printing shop with about, about uh, between 10 and 15 employees. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I, I went into industrial and labor relations. It was um, 
a natural, natural. Uh, sure. It was a, a continuation of the way I had been uh, trained and uh, raised mm -hmm. in uh, in my childhood. So I had heard about those issues for many years. So it was natural some bit. But uh, when I went to uh, get the doctoral degree from uh, Cornell, I needed to, Cornell is the largest uh, school in the world uh, in, in, uh, related to industrial, uh, mm -hmm. to industrial relations. Mm -hmm. It has six departments. So um, one collective bargaining is one of the departments. And uh, so I chose as a major to specialize in human resource management mm -hmm. and to take um, organizational behavior as a or organizational psychology as a second, second uh, as a minor, and uh, research methods and methodology as a second minor. So, <laughs> let me move to that. Um, okay, uh, I lost my point. Greg, Greg Bamberg. Greg Bamberg, okay. Background than you. So that's a relation. Get, uh, Greg published a number of books, uh, and I, I wrote a few chapters in some of those books. And, uh, uh -huh. Uh, so there was so a research there was a research collaboration thanks to Ifsa or did you know each yeah, other thanks. I didn't know I didn't know him before okay so I met I met him at uh, in, in Ifsa uh, meetings uh, he came to Montreal and before that he came to uh, to uh, Alcala mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was a he was a Australian representative on if some uh, board, sure. uh, council. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what can I say about uh, his leadership style? About, uh, Greg, he he, he was a, he, he did a wonderful job. He he had no difficulties um, with English, <laughs> <laughs> of course. It was a, his right. uh, mother tongue uh, with a strong. Uh, Australian and British accent. He could he could switch from British accent to Australian accent as he wishes. Uh -huh. And uh, but uh, other than that, um, he, he organized a, a wonderful conference. And but that conference uh, in, uh, in Australia right. was for my wife and I. It was like a, vac a vacation we, uh -huh. because uh, I was off off the hook. I didn't have any uh, specific responsibility except except uh, cheering the uh, the uh, uh, the council meeting mm -hmm. as the, uh, a, a chair of the board, but uh, sure. no no specific uh, no no worries no uh, right. nothing to worry about. So, and, uh, it was and, very very interesting. Right, and and then. Uh, and then you stopped going to the congresses of Ipsam. Yeah, I went to a few other after that, but uh, okay, I, I I was no longer part of the organizing. So sure, uh, sure. I would. Did, uh, did you go to to Gothenburg, to Sweden? No, no, no. I did, I had uh, conflicting interests. Sure, and, sure. No, that's uh, that's absolutely fine. But I, I was asking because I was wondering if you met Rolf Landin, Lundin. Lund oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rolf. Yeah. Rolf, yeah. He was a... We, we had, I had a good time with him. With uh, the, 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 the guy from Sweden. Yes. Yeah. yeah I have a good, a good memory of him. And then he's... Um, the Swedish Swedish, Swedish uh, people they are very much like they look they have a culture that's close to our culture in Canada mm -hmm. and, and um, so we, we are very direct people uh, very uh, we we don't like to waste our time <laughs> and uh, we go to the point and in discussions and uh, so that's uh, about it for for Rolf London. I have two last questions. One, it's, it's very specific, is why did you choose the title Taking Stock for the conference in Canada? <laughs> uh, it's more Jean Pasquier who did that. Um, he, he, he wanted to, um, 
indicate that that conference will be a good opportunity for for looking back uh, to try to put a judgment on where we are now compared to to the past to and where where we're going mm -hmm. a good good time for assessment time for uh, a deciding maybe for a change of uh, strategy for a, mm -hmm. so and, and it was short taking taking stock uh, it's quite quite uh, Mm -hmm. quite short and so it, it was meeting many of the criteria for a good uh, a good um, uh, mm -hmm. a good, a good type of that uh, how do you call that a, a, a loto a logo a logo not a logo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and anyway that that was the reason for taking that title for the Montreal conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see makes sense um, so indeed, if, if we got the, uh, the uh, proceedings scanned, it would be very useful, I think, for our archives. My, my last question, um, and then, you know, I'll also give you the floor if you want to add something, is obviously in these last 30 years, since 1990, when IFSAM was founded, the situation has changed a lot in not not only in the world in general but uh it has changed also in the specific field of scholarly academies of management in 1990 there were most of them there, there were national academies that were very domestic it was mostly members from the same country which went to the conferences um if some was probably the only uh organization which had a truly global conference at that time but since then i would say already starting in the 2000s uh things have changed a lot several of these uh, national academies have internationalized and have become regional or even global such as the academy of management but there have been also regional academies which have been created, such as the European Academy of Management or the Africa Academy of Management or the International Federation of East Asia Academies of Management. And finally, there are some new organizations which are born with a global scope, such as the International Corporate Governance Society or the International Chinese Management Research association so now we have a variety of uh, kind of types of uh, scholarly associations which i guess the founders of ifsam did not have in mind because you know they were drafting the statutes for their their own time for what the situation was in 1990. um you know my question i guess is twofold um one very specific one uh, for which you, you might not have the answer, but you know, I would like to throw it to you because maybe you can also help us think about it, is um, you know, the current statutes of IFSAM, since the foundation, the statutes give two representatives per association, but if there is more than one association per country, they have to allocate the votes among the different associations from the same country, which clearly shows that they had kind of a UN, United Nations uh, model in their mind, right? So the vote rights are at the end by country. Given what I described before, that the situation now that we still have national academies, but we have regional academies for an entire continent whether it's europe or africa or asia and then we have global organizations uh, do you have any ideas of how we should think about the political rights yeah uh, if some has a lot of competition so uh, if some uh, must uh, distinguish itself to um, be attractive to um, various uh, associations that it also also, there is the question of uh, should if some stick with the membership open only to associations? Uh, if some is a, is a federation of associations? Yes, of scholarly that, associations, yes. Mm -hmm. 
of scholarly associations, scholarly associations. Of associations of researchers and professors. Mm -hmm. But uh, if some uh, does, does not have individual members, no. And at me, even at the, um, in my time 20 years ago, we were wondering if, you, if we should have individual members, that is, people uh, who would like to help that kind of federation to mm -hmm. uh, grow and prosper. N maybe on a, it, it could be maybe on a kind of a, a don donation or a kind of a, somebody would, uh, would um, anyway, the, 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 the issue is that if individual people could become members in specific right. type of member, if some maybe could help, if some have a better uh, influence, better, better be, would be better in terms of financial, financial issue, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. financially, but maybe it's not an issue. Uh, and, and but uh, if we if we don't have, for example, um, members in Ireland, if the Irish Association of Management Scholars is not a member of IFSAM, but if member uh, Irish scholars wanted to join as, uh, just just to participate in our uh, mm -hmm. biennial uh, conferences you see I, I said how as if I were still involved I'm not it's but um, that's great <laughs> it shows uh, your your identification I, I still have a, a feeling of an identification with if Sam so um, you cannot be part of that, that type of organization for so long and uh, not being in somewhat identified. Sure. <clears throat> but I think that that could help. That this is an, mm -hmm. a path uh, that should be examined, find a ways to, mm -hmm. in um, maybe the, the level of uh, contribution, financial contribution could vary upon uh, the rich, the, the the extent to which, for example, the Academy of Management to spend one thousand dollar, it's it's nothing for them, but it could it could be uh, it could be increased maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you you must all, we must also work in terms of uh, partnership. How could uh, actual members become more partners of FIFSAM in uh, FIFSAM's uh, development? We are working on that. We are working yeah, on that. I suppose so. We, we're going to have a, a meeting actually to try to find out for those who are interested, particularly because of the COVID times, you know, the move to online activities, to online conferences raises the issue of having a good electronic platform for the conferences. And now we find each academy, each association trying to develop or buy, contract out the services. Whereas, you know, we could probably find something which works for at least several and share the cost because it's very expensive. And so this is, we are gonna try to create, to actually use if some as a platform for several members to find hopefully common solutions so okay. that they can yeah so, so uh, i can do anything to help uh, let me know thank you thank you we we have some we, we have something in mind and i hope that we will soon be able to communicate it uh, but as okay. i as i said at the 30 year <clears throat> excuse me at the 30 years uh ceremony the council already approved the creation of an advisory board uh, which will have some of the former leaders who have greatly contributed to the uh, federation and which who are willing to continue contributing ideas and, and wisdom so we hope that we'll be able to put that in place the inaugural board pretty soon so maybe in closing, uh, if you want to share any reflections, any final remarks, also about how you have seen the field evolve in the last 30 years, um, anything that you want to say in closing? 
Okay, I'll close by uh, telling you that um, I wish to congratulate you on your Thank leadership. You. And uh, I think with people like you, if Sam has a future. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored. Well, I think uh, we'll, we'll try to do our best. And we have now, as you know, ASAC, which is back. And we have several new members, such as the Italian Association, SEMA, the Africa Academy of Management, and we hope to have uh, ANZAM back also, so uh, from Australia, New Zealand, and I'm, I know that, uh, and the French Second Association, uh, you know, we already had FENEJ as a member, and now we have the L'Association Internationale de Management Stratégique also as a member, and I'm convinced that their leaders are willing to invest their time also to make IFSAM better. So I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> so with people like you, uh, IFSAM is in good hands. Well, let's hope. <laughs> and I, I want to thank you again for all this time. We, it's almost two hours that we have spent together. It's great. I think that it's, it's gonna, we're going to edit this video and uh, and post parts of it uh, on our website and I think it's a good um, you know memory of, of that period of time so thank you so much merci merci énormément and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on January 29th okay thank you thank you for having me my pleasure all right <laughs>